the Corsair, a name synonymous with great men and great actions, a legend in the annals of aerial warfare. Today, the Corsair II, the A7E, is in service with United States Navy. And again, a Corsair is writing new chapters in the history of naval aviation, in Corsair tradition. The A7A was designed, built, and flown less than two years after contract go-ahead by Vought Aeronautics Company. First combat sorties were flown by the U.S. Navy 26 months after first flight, an extremely rapid introduction of a new tactical aircraft. This current A7E Corsair II is one of the most effective close support and interdiction aircraft ever developed. An inertial guidance system requires only two minutes of ground operation for stabilization and course alignment. Airborne fine alignment requires 16 minutes, or it can be accomplished on the ground. Of the six wing pylons, four are stressed for 3,500 pounds each. The remaining two are stressed for 2,500 pounds each. 15,000 pounds of payload can be carried on these pylons. The two fuselage stations can each accommodate 500 pounds of defensive missiles. The M61 20mm cannon holds 1,000 rounds. The pilot may select 4,000 or 6,000 rounds per minute rate of fire. The Allison Rolls-Royce TF41A2 engine provides 15,000 pounds of thrust. The A7E's navigation and weapons delivery system is built around a digital computer which stores a vast amount of detailed information needed to carry out the planned mission. The system remembers the pilot's briefing data and uses it to present command guidance symbology on the head-up display to help the pilot navigate and put the ordnance on target more accurately and with less effort. Navigation features the A7E greatly reduced pilot workload the automatic flight control system, the navigation computer, the head-up display, and the forward-looking radar relieve the pilot from constant attention to flying and navigating. The A7E also incorporates a projected map display, which is computer-driven and can cover the entire mission route. The pilot can correlate the display with the radar and precisely position the aircraft. Terrain following and terrain avoidance commands on the head-up display are invaluable in poor visibility and in low-level penetration. Navigation accuracy is equal to or exceeds one-half of one percent of the distance flown. This is about one mile for every 200 miles flown. Time on station at 200 nautical miles is 70 minutes at 5,000 feet, carrying 12 Mark 82s and two Sidewinders with five minutes at military rated thrust. Maximum velocity is 540 knots with 12 Mark 82s and two sidewinders. Radius of action, including all reserves, is 480 nautical miles carrying 12 Mark 82s and two sidewinders with five minutes on target. Ferry range is 1,713 nautical miles with internal fuel only. Nearing the target, the pilot has total flexibility in selecting the most effective attack mode. When the target can be seen, the normal visual attack mode is selected. Radar bomb is used when the target is obscured by weather. An offset feature is used to bomb a hidden target with a known relationship to a prominent ground feature. This can be used in either visual or radar modes. The navigation bomb mode is available when exact target coordinates are known. 
A 27 square foot speed brake provides the pilot with outstanding deceleration characteristics. Symbolism on the head-up display indicates aircraft velocity vector, dive angle, azimuth steering commands, and an aiming reticle, which represents the computed weapon impact point. In range for the selected weapon, the solution cues appear. Once they have appeared, the pilot may begin his pull-up maneuver any time. With the aiming reticle locked onto the target, all the pilot has to do is maneuver to keep the velocity vector symbol and aiming reticle on the bomb fall line. Once in range for the selected weapon, the solution cue symbol moves toward an intersection with the velocity vector symbol. At intersection, a computed weapon release occurs without constraints due to airspeed, altitude, pitch angle, or G-loading. The computing is continuous, which permits the pilot the flexibility to choose mode of delivery. The flashing velocity vector symbol indicates weapon release has occurred. However, the advantage of being able to fly an evasive attack course through the aid of the digital computer has reduced susceptibility of the A7E to detection and damage from the ground defenses. lift wing can sustain high G loads at low altitude transonic speeds. For instance, the A7 aircraft can sustain a 5G steady state equilibrium turn at 450 knots. Rate of roll exceeds 200 degrees per second. Other survivability features include nearly 400 pounds of aluminum and steel armor to protect the pilot, the engine, and essential hydraulic and control mechanisms. The lower part of the aft fuel cell and the sump cell are self-sealing, as well as the main fuel line, thus always providing enough fuel for 300 nautical miles. As an added safety feature, the hydraulic system is triple redundant with three power control systems, separated except at control actuators. Each system alone can supply power to control the aircraft. After landing, turnaround time is kept to a minimum. Open wheel wells provide instant access for single point pressure fueling and for checking and servicing the entire hydraulic system. 90% of all servicing and maintenance is accomplished at ground level. Non-structural panels and doors are provided for components requiring frequent servicing. Many self-test features are built into the A7E cockpit. This eliminates the need for complex ground equipment. In summary, the A7E, as did its predecessors, offers a highly cost-effective, easy-to-maintain, flexible, and exceptionally accurate weapon system.